Further proof that sunlight is the best disinfectant. Earlier today, the Supreme Court announced that for the first time in its 200-plus year history, it has adopted a code of ethics. Well, sort of. The 14-page document broadly lays out five canons of conduct on issues such as when justices should recuse themselves and what kind of outside activities they can engage in. However, it fails to mention exactly how it would be enforced or who would enforce it. This is a clear effort by the high court to short-circuit an increasing pressure campaign from Senate Democrats to impose a binding ethics code for Supreme Court justices, especially after reports earlier this year from ProPublica that Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito did not disclose free trips they accepted from wealthy right-wing donors. That pressure was turned up last week when the Senate Judiciary Committee debated issuing subpoenas to one of those donors, Harlan Crow, as well as conservative legal activist Leonard Leo. Joining me now is Ellie Mastal, justice correspondent for The Nation. Ellie, how seriously should we take this ethics code? Let me just read a little bit of it before I let you answer that. It says here, the absence of a code, however, has led in recent years to the misunderstanding that the justices of the court, unlike all other jurors in this country, regard themselves as unrestricted by any ethics rules. Your thoughts? Misunderstanding. So we were yeah. confused about whether or not Supreme Court justices can have their mother's houses paid for by wealthy Republican donors. Oh, well, thank you, John Roberts, for elucidating that, in fact, they can. Because that's the real problem with this ethics code. There are no ethics involved in the code. There is nothing in this 14 pages of weak sauce that restrains people like Clarence Thomas from doing everything that Clarence Thomas did. Nothing about not taking gifts from wealthy donors or taking trips or taking free vacations or taking free houses. Nothing in there is unethical according to the Supreme Court. So I would call this ethics reform toothless, but that's a bit of an insult to people who have dentures, right? Because that because it's weaker even than that. This ethics code is best understood as only Clarence Thomas can decide whether or not Clarence Thomas violated Clarence Thomas's rules, all right? It's like Ricky Henderson wrote this for himself. Um, and so with that as the setup, the idea that this weak sauce ethics rules, um, so-called ethics rules, there's no enforcement mechanism, as you pointed out. It's still up to the individual justices to decide whether or not they should recuse. There's no peer review. There's no independent third-party adjudication about any of these uh, potential ethics violations. So what is it for? And Joy, you've hit it exactly right. The, this has an audience of exactly one, Senate Judiciary Chairman Dick Durbin. Yeah. This is John Roberts and M's attempt to push Durbin off of his investigation, an investigation that, by the way, the Supreme Court justices are still refusing to show up um, and testify about. Right? It's to push him off their investigation and to give ranking uh, Republican member Lindsey Graham something else to scream cry about when he tries to justify <laughs> the unethical behavior of the Supreme Court. Let me, let me read a little bit of it. This, this is their code they're saying they're putting in place. A justice may accept reasonable compensation and reimbursement for expenses for permitted activities if the source of the payments does not give the appearance of influencing the justice's official duties or otherwise appear improper. Expense reimbursement should be limited to the actual reasonable estimated cost of travel, food, and lodging reasonably occurred by the justice where the appropriate for the action, but the justice's spouse or relative. Um, for some time, all justices have attempted to comply with the statute governing financial disclosure, and the undersigned members of the court each individually reaffirm that commitment. The, the idea that they've attempted to comply with the compensation reimbursement piece seems laughable, but what do you make of that new... It's not really a rule. It's like a suggestion. Right. It's, it's Captain Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean, right? The code is more of a guideline, really, right? Like, that's <laughs> what we're talking about here. And this idea that they've attempted to comply, well, you done failed. You done failed at the compliance part. So what have you done to actually make sure that you will comply um, going forward? I've done the Google search. I've seen a lot of people do this on the Internet as well. The code says in 14 pages, uses the word justices should, the word should, 53 times. It uses the word justices shall, shall do something zero times, all right? Mm. So again, this, this is not worth the paper it is printed on. It is like erecting a dam with a chain link fence. It's a giant waste of time for everybody. But there's also one more thing that I think is worth pointing out. It's, it's also incredibly permissive 
of the real kind of graft and corruption the Supreme Court likes to do, which is to appear at Leonard Leo's Federal Society events. Just last week at the Federal Society's annual gala, four of the conservatives showed up, um, and the feature speaker was Amy Coney Barrett. This ethics code literally proscribes exactly how Amy Coney Barrett is allowed to keep doing that by some legal mumbo jumbo redefining what a fundraiser is so that the Federal Society's annual gala doesn't count as a fundraiser according to these rules. They're useless. Dick Durbin should ignore them and press on with his investigation. And, and I will note for the audience that they're doing this while the Federalist Society is also writing up rules, I mean, uh, writing up ideas for how Donald Trump could essentially rule us as a dictator. And one of the sort of guardrails against him becoming a dictator is supposed to be this exact same Supreme Court that Leonard Leo owns. Fabulous. Ellie Mistal, it's all working out just perfectly. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>